It has been so fun. The Sun Belt Fun Belt. That's how we're going to start college football final. Georgia Southern, UL Monroe, 12 seconds left. UL Monroe down five. Need the touchdown for the win. Colby suits. Does he get in? No. He's just short. Clock runs. Get up. Do something. They can't. Georgia Southern, 35 30 winner over UL Monroe. Mm -mm. Got to get up, got to clock it, got to do something. We've got an hour to prove that we, we got can a be fresh on time. clock. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, Tempo. Matt Berry. Look, Tempo. we wanted to talk Georgia Auburn because that was the big matchup, but history was made in Ames, Iowa between Iowa State and Oklahoma. Oh, by the way, Oklahoma hasn't lost back-to-back -back regular season games since 1999. Brock Purdy stripped by Isaiah Thomas. Virtual lock implications for Galloway. Huge play for the Oklahoma defense. He's a much maligned Oklahoma defense, but they stand up big in the fourth quarter, giving Oklahoma a chance to take the lead. So now first and goal from the three, Spencer Rattler hits Jeremiah Hall. That was another real good game by Spencer Rattler. 300 yards passing, finds his H-back Hall wide open in the flat. All right, so ensuing kickoff after OU takes the 30-23 lead. They have momentum. Kane Nuwanu gets it and new Wangu takes it 84 yards and how do you answer a touchdown by the other team you get a huge kickoff return now you have momentum new Wangu gives the people hope that it's going to happen Purdy takes it himself for the touchdown game tied at 30 that big for Galloway's over which was 63 and a half just can't afford a field goal at mm. this point now to the game other than your outside game. Brees Hall, handoff, huge. Yeah, Iowa State got two starting offensive linemen back last week, and that's really benefited Brees Hall. This looks like the best rushing attack in the Big 12. Gain of 36. Hall now. Big. Brees Hall, 28 rushes, 139. That's the one that mattered, because that's the one that made it an over. Right. That, that's why everyone's celebrating, because they that's know why I'm the over. And then Rattler picked off by Ashim Young. What a play. So Riley can't believe it. Ashim Young, the star. Iowa State beats Oklahoma at home for the first time since 1960. You know, honestly, it's our senior class. We've got 16 seniors that came here on a, really a hope and a dream that we could someday turn Iowa State football around. And, you know, they came here at 3-9 and nine and believed in us and believed in our vision. And they're beginning to make that vision become a reality. You know, had some opportunities, I thought, there, especially at the end of the first half, to really gain some separation. We were playing good ball, just not great ball, um, and had some, you know, chances to separate against a good team on the road, which, you know, when you're a great team, you, you take advantage of those, and we, we're not quite there yet. There's the graphic. Last home win against Oklahoma, 1960. Trivia question, who was president at the time, 1960? Nothing. I'm Canadian. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll tell you who the right. prime minister was. Yeah, I'm Canadian, too. All right, Dwight Eisenhower. <laughs> Both of you should be ashamed I've of yourselves. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. should be ashamed of yourselves. Is that a dollar? More Big 12 chaos. TCU in Texas. Max Duggan getting his first start after a heart procedure. Great story in and of himself. And he teaches us how to Duggan. Yeah, and he's dynamic. He's real good running the football. Led the offense. 79 rushing yards and two scores. In third quarter, Texas down. Sam Ellinger tries to find Jake Smith. Smith flag on the play. We'll go back and take a look. Look at this. It's called sideline interference. Got to keep the sidelines clean. Which player did it? Which no, player no, did no, it? No, it was Gary Patterson. It was the head coach. Head coach. Yeah, did he fall? Where's the That's, get back no, coach? No, he ran into the official. Should have been targeting. Where's the get back coach? Lead with the crown. Later, Texas takes advantage. Ellen to Rashawn Johnson. Seven yard touchdown. Texas cuts the lead 23 21. Just over 10 to go. TCU leads by five. Ellinger to Malcolm Epps. Yeah, it was a gutsy performance by Ellinger. Came into the game with a quad injury, had a left hand injury, and TCU's defense played him tough. Ellinger still threw four TDs. So Texas looking to start 3-0 for the first time since 2012. Texas takes the lead. Duggan, 26 yards. TCU takes the 33-29 lead. What a performance out of Duggan. Here comes Texas. Ellinger to Keontae Ingram. And this is going to matter in a minute. 52-yard game, oh. but how much does Ingram have left? Texas oh. needs to score a touchdown. All right, so just get him to Ingram, right? Of course. Oh, no. Did he fumble the ball? He fumbled the ball. They should give oh. LeKendrick Van Zant from TCU a game ball. He was the guy that chased Ingram down. Tom Herman didn't take the big running back out of the game. Looked like he got tired trying to stretch the football. Fumbles. Unbelievable. Wow. 
TCU now 7-2 and two against Texas since joining the Big 12. Go, Duggan. I felt great. I mean, teammates have helped me out a lot, and I, I just wanted to work as hard as I could just to be um, have an opportunity to be able to come back and help this team in whatever way I could. What can you say about your defense coming up big with that stop on the one? Shoot, our defense, they played one heck of a game, and coming up with a stop like that, um, <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. I'm very confident that, that we can get our problems fixed. Uh, you know, this, this team is very together. Uh, they were hurt in the locker room, but I, I heard a bunch of guys um, – you know, picking each other up, uh, understanding that we've got a long season, and um, the only way to fix it uh, is with hard work and, you know, going back to uh, practice with a purpose. All right, Tom Herman was once the hottest commodity on the coaching market when he arrived in Austin 2017. But Texas has now lost six times as a ranked team to an unranked opponent. That is the most such defeats for any coach in that span. I have to wonder when Texas fans are going to start losing their patience. They've got a veteran quarterback and a lot of skill coming back. But, gentlemen, what we know after this Saturday is the Big 12 is an absolute <laughs> mess. So, Jess, I'll start with you. Who do you like and why? Well, it's a wide-open conference. Oklahoma State's the only undefeated team in the Big 12 left. I think you got to watch TCU right now, and it's because of quarterbacks Mac Duggan. Now, in the summer, through COVID testing, they discovered he had a heart issue that hold him out of football. He didn't start their game against Iowa State. But since he came in the second half last week, he's totally sparked this offense with his playmaking ability. The true sophomore is so dynamic, and he's a difference maker. And he's got a lot of arm talent and the ability – to read coverage. Defenses are going to try to light him up. He does a good job moving around inside the pocket, but gets rid of the football early, reading coverage and giving his targets an opportunity to make plays. TCU has a lot of speed at wide receiver. They just need someone to distribute them the football. As a defense, it's a nightmare because you play zone coverage or you play man coverage and you leave the middle of the field open. Duggan's going to take advantage of it with his athleticism and his speed. He's a nice compliment to what Gary Patterson's going to do on defense because you know TCU is going to come after you. They're going to create negative plays. They're going to create takeaways. We know the Big 12, you got to score points. You're going to have to outscore your opponent. Max Duggan gives them that opportunity. Now that he's healthy and back on the field, keep your eye on the Horn Frogs. And I'll tell you this, you cannot go against Gary Patterson in any way, shape, or form. One of the best coaches, most underrated coaches in the country. So, Joey, he's got TCU. Do you have anybody that looks like a playoff team at this point? Well, I think it's interesting as you look around the country, especially when the season started and the Big Ten wasn't playing, the Pac-12 wasn't playing, you know, and the question started to be like, OK, there will be one out of the Big 12, which would be Oklahoma. They look like a mess right now. Of course, SEC, of course, ACC and Clemson. Now, all of a sudden, we have one undefeated team left in the Big 12, and that's Oklahoma State. Now, they have a top five scoring defense at Oklahoma State, and they're starting to get healthy. They're starting to run the ball better now. I don't know if anybody believes that Oklahoma State will be standing at the top at the end of the season, but what I do know, in this season of COVID and the way things have shaken up, the Big 12 has not looked like what we expected. Mm. So now all of a sudden, does this mean that the door is wide open for a group of five team to get in? Cincinnati and Luke Fickle put a lot of confidence down there. This could be the season that a group of five team gets in. Now, we expect Ohio State to be really good, so they'll take one of the spots. Pac-12, or er Arizona State? Who knows? I'm so proud this of you. could be the year. The group of five segues perfect out of you. That's what I'm here for. Was that team and is that team UCF? But they yeah. be the group of five team is one Joseph Galloway alluded to. Well, they've got Tulsa. Tulsa was once down by 17. UCF's Johnny Richardson gets the ball stripped by Bryson Powers. You expect UCF to put this game, but they score so many points. They're up 17, should be game over. Turnover is the only way for Tulsa to get back in this. Big hit on the kickoff return, get the ball back. Three touchdown favorites was UCF. So the very next play after the turnover, Zach Smith take a shot. Sam Crawford Jr. Love the play call. Sudden change situation. Let's go. You're playing UCF. You're going to have to score Zach Smith. He was on his game. 273 passing yards and three TD. All that hurricane was golden. Momentum continuing. Can Tulsa pull off the upset? 
Smith looks to find Keelan Stokes back in the end zone. Yeah, not only offense for Tulsa, but give their defense a lot of credit. They held UCF to three points in the second half. When's the last time that's happened? Again, we're talking group of five. Is it going to be UCF? Is it going to be SMU? Is it going to be Cincinnati? Dylan Gabriel finds Marlon Williams 22 yards. Gabriel was game. motivated, had two picks in their loss against Tulsa last year. He's come out and said UCF's the best team in the state of Florida. Not, so you can't lose to Tulsa. They're not even the best team in the state of Oklahoma. Why? Because Tulsa puts that talk to bed. UCF loses their first home game. They were at the bounce house. First loss there since 2016. So the group of five conversation, that ends with UCF after their 34-26 loss. Still ahead. You guys remember when Auburn, Georgia, that was the big game, top 10 teams. One team is the alpha dog in their division. I see what you did there. We'll tell you who. I see what you did. I mean, it's the A block. we got to bring the best in the A block, which is why we're going to slide Clemson down to the B block. Why? Because they had Virginia, and it was the same as it ever was in Death Valley. That and more. We're off and running. This is college football final. Deep South's oldest rivalry. 125th meeting between Auburn and Georgia. Sixth time they've met the top ten. Keep an eye on Smoke Monday. Delivers a hit here on Kiaris Jackson on the return. And this would be huge. Yeah, review the refs. They would penalize Monday for targeting on the hit. They'd eject him from the game, and that's a big loss for Auburn's defense. He's a leader. He's a guy that gets the secondary lined up. That would cost them dearly. They said they had communication issues after the quarterback of their defense was ejected from the game. Stetson Bennett gets a start from Georgia. Impressive. Look at throwing to his left, finds Jackson. Rolling left, throws to the right, perfect pass on the sideline. Running game big. Amir White walks in for the easy touchdown. Yeah, and this offensive line played so much better than they did a week ago against Arkansas. They were getting a lot of movement against a very physical Auburn front. So Georgia up 10-0. This Bennett story is remarkable. Finds George Pickens for the touchdown. Great throw, man-to-man -to -man coverage because Georgia ran the ball so well on the outside. You can get some man-to-man man coverage can't throw it any better than this. Yeah, man, I'm telling you what, Bennett ain't giving this job back anytime soon. Georgia's offense dominated the first half. Bo Nix and Auburn struggled. Yeah, Georgia's front took the game over. They shut the run down. They got pressure on Bo Nix. He was only 21 of 40 with an interception. Was never able to get into a red. 81 total yards in the first half. Not what Gus Malzahn expects. Less than a minute to go. Auburn down 27-6. Nix trying to make something happen. Pass picked off by Mark Webb. And Auburn ran the ball for 39 yards in this game and we've always seen Gus Malzahn's offense when they can't run it they can't throw it. Georgia in a beatdown. Well I don't know they were terrible last week so something must have just happened. I mean the Wizard of Oz came and saw them and gave them all courage and ability and they they played better. They were the same guys guys I mean they, 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 it's not any different. Uh, I, tr I attribute it to the fact that we didn't have a ton of penalties although we had too many and uh, we didn't turn the ball over. It goes a uh, shot at the media that old Kirby Smart took there. But look, Georgia's ground out their victory against Auburn. Bulldogs ran it between the tackles 38 times, 179 yards, and two scores on the night. In contrast, Auburn had just 10 runs between the tackles for 31 yards. Joey, not an underestimation to say this is how Georgia got the win. And this is what you expect Georgia to look like. In the first half, you know, Coach Smart can say what he wants, but this is not what they look like. This offensive line made a statement in this game. I don't know if he challenged them during the week, but they were physical up front, and there was really nothing Auburn could do. When they put the big boys in and they wanted to gain yards between the tackles, that's exactly what they did. Six players in the box. Now, last week they struggled early against six players, but when you have six players in the box, you have to be able to run the ball. Watch the blocking up front. Watch how they dominate this game. They come in motion, they pick off the blitzer, and this is how Georgia makes teams pay. They ran the ball for over 200 yards in this game, and when you do that, it brings the linebackers the respect they have to give to the pass game. When you play fake now, now Bennett has a wide open. Here's Jackson, who had nine catches, 147 yards, throws this ball to the corner. This is the Georgia offense we've been waiting to see. Yep. You know, not what we saw last week, and they had five points in the first quarter. If they can do this, 
This is why Georgia will be in that top five, top four area, and we'll be having a conversation whether how many teams out of the SEC get into a playoff if Georgia, Florida, and the way these teams are looking. Running game is a quarterback's best friend. They did it so uh, physically on Saturday night, physically on defense, always Georgia's calling. They are elite, man. I mean, this is a playoff caliber defense. That's something you expect from Kirby Smart. They're physical. They can run. They've got difference makers at all three levels, and it starts with stopping the run. They've got big bodies up front that win one-on-one that allow linebackers to run unimpeded. Aziz Ojolari, he's their best pass rusher. They got guys that can collapse the pocket. Three sacks on Bo Nix. But even when they weren't getting him on the ground, they were disrupting his timing, forcing him to flush. And then playing zone coverage behind it, they're able to rally the ball and create takeaways. So you know this about Georgia. They're going to see some good offenses this year, right? They're going to play yeah. Alabama. They're going to play Florida. They need this defense to step up week in and week out. They've got a good challenge next week against Tennessee. They're a very physical offensive line. I think one of the better O-lines in the SEC. That'll be a good challenge for this Georgia defense. But no doubt, this defense can take Georgia to the play. I love how this SEC East is shaping up. You've got Florida. You've got Georgia. And oh, by the way, one of them is probably going to get Alabama who looks really, really dominant again. Thanks to Mac Jones. Look at this deep touch. John Metz, 78-yard touchdown. A Jesse virtual lock implication. How many athletes does this Alabama offense have. Mechie had five catches, 181 yards, and two touchdowns. It's a valid question. They lose guys to the NFL every year, and then they just trot another one out there. Ryan Reddick and Kellamon got close. And this is the play right after a Mac Jones interception got returned deep into their own end. So Jimbo Fisher keeping his foot down on the pedal. Yeah, I feel like that triggered Alabama because it just got ugly from there. Najee Harris to AM's two. Harris then punches it in. Alabama takes a 21-14 lead. And then Joey, this is when they just it gets out of hand. Mond picked off by Daniel Wright. Yeah, and Mond had to play really well for them to have a chance in this game. When Alabama scores on defense, really you can't stop. They have so many weapons on the offensive side, you can't let them score on defense. Speaking of those weapons, Jones to Devontae Smith. Yeah, and it was a career day for Jones. 435 yards passing. How about Devontae Smith doing a great job getting his foot down? Take a look at this again. He turns his left foot so the toes touch down inbounds before the heel. Remarkable play. Hot play implications. We'll have to find out come the end of the show. And if it's not Devontae Smith, why don't you just oh, chuck well. it to Jalen Waddle? Yeah, let's just try Waddle. Five catches, 142 yards. It's a double move. They fake the dig, pump fake, safety comes down. Easy touchdown for Waddle. Nick Saban, 19th career win by 25 plus points against AP ranks teams. 52-24. They just keep on rolling to the tide. What about Florida in the AP top three for the first time since 2012? Touching gesture before the game. Florida placed a cardboard cutout in their stadium dedicated to the late great Edward Ashoff, our colleague here at ESPN and a Florida alum. Ashoff passed away in December of 2019. I loved seeing that before the game mm. when we did kick Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts. Yeah, Dan Mullen calls Pitts a unicorn. 6'6", 240 pounds. You can line him up at wide receivers. Just too big and physical for DBs to cover. And look at the catch radius. Guys, we were talking about it. We're just listening to that Monday in the first round of the draft. Just keep counting it up. Yeah. Kyle Pitts making money touchdown second TD of the game including last week that six touchdowns in six quarters for Pitts. I'd say that's effective Canarius Tony out of the backfield. Yeah now Trask has 10 touchdown passes through two games. No SEC players done that since 1998. I, I, I hopped ahead there. That was a dollar second touch. That is a dollar for me. Yeah, we'll, were you? we'll dock me for that later. I was so excited for the Canarius. Yeah, Tony well, he, listen, he's there been he injured throughout his career but he's gotten so much better at his route running. He's always been dangerous after the catch so many weapons for Trask to throw to. The Gators win their 31st straight SEC opener. Pitts, Kyle and Kyle, they're really good. Well, I would just say with me and Kyle's relationship, it's, it's fun every week going out there knowing he trusts me and I trust him. And he'll put the ball there. And Coach, Coach Mullen makes great play calls in order for me to get in the end zone. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. You know, my goal is just to do what, um, just execute the play and just find the right matchups. And, you know, um, I think – when everybody's executing on offense, all 11 guys, I think we're unstoppable. Unstoppable they have been. Gators, dogs, look out for those two.
Let's check in on Kentucky Ole Miss. Ole Lane Kiffin trying to get his first win for the Rebels. Christopher Rodriguez, 21-yard touchdown. Kentucky leads. Rodriguez, 17 carries, 133 yards, two touchdowns. Kentucky was toting the rock. 28-14. They were starting to pull away. Here comes Matt Corral and Jonathan Mingo. There's a reason Matt Corral won the QB derby for Lane Kiffin. This guy's been lethal through the first two games. 24-29 in this one. Again, down 28-14. One score game. Corral to Mingo ties the game at 28. Later in the fourth, same score, second and goal, Snoop. Ole Miss leads 35 to 28. Ensuing Kentucky possession, second and goal, Rodriguez Wildcat formation. Kentucky ran the ball 400 yards in this game. Knew it was going to be a shootout. Ole Miss and the offense, Kentucky and the athletes, whoever had the ball last night have a chance to Let's go to overtime, shall we? First and 10, Kentucky gets the ball first. Trey Wilson runs it in. Yeah, Terry Wilson had a day. 14 of 18 throwing the football. Also, though, 129 yards rushing and three scores. Like Galloway with the pitching wedge. Shank. Uh, not really like my pitching wedge, but he did this. College kicker situation. So Ole Miss... Carroll to Elijah Moore answers. So now, gentlemen, an extra point wins the game for Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. We ready? Let the celebration begin. Look at that. Ole Miss gets the win 42-41. And Lane Kiffin's back in the win column in the SEC. Really, what a great win for our fans. You know, um, you know, to get a road win like this in the SEC hadn't happened a lot in this program for a while. So I'm just really happy for our players, for our fans, and we're just getting started. What does this win mean to what this team is going to have to face the rest of the schedule? Well, it, it's it's a hard schedule, obviously, 10 SEC games, and so we're just happy to get to 1-0 this week, and I think we play a pretty good team next week, too. The restaurant tab at City Grocery is going to be out of control. Oh. ACC just got weird on Saturday. We'll show you how and why. A lot of games came down in the line. Plus, Jesse and Joey, their top five is back. Caveat, it's who they've seen, not who's going to play. So Big Ten, Pac-12, and everyone else, stand down. But we've got the top five coming up next on College Football Final. Welcome back to College Football Final. We had a rematch, Clemson and Virginia from Death Valley. Trevor Lawrence and his teammates, their social justice messages on Saturday. Let's pick this game up late first quarter. Clemson leads 3-0. Lawrence, the give to Travis Etienne. And Etienne showing you why he's the two-time ACC Offensive Player of the Year. He is hard to bring down. And Lawrence showing you why he's probably the number one pick. In yeah, in a clean draft. pocket here. He was under a lot of duress in this game, though. Here he finds Amari Rodgers for the touchdown. That's his new go-to guy in this passing attack. And then Lawrence tosses it out to Rodgers. What an effort here by Rodgers. Second touchdown of the day for him. Clemson leads 24-10 at the half. Opening drive. First and 10, Brennan Armstrong, and watch this interception by Andrew Booth. Ooh, this could be the play of the day. Goes up, falling back, one-handed, like mm. the ball is stuck to his glove. Has to be in top plays at the end of the show. We'll see. We know this. Lawrence likes ETN. We know ETN likes to put up a boatload of yards. 187 total yards, two touchdowns, 329 and three for Lawrence. Clemson rolls 41-23. And now let's take a look at who you guys think could be in the college football playoff with the Capital One fan vote. It's the inaugural Capital One fan vote, Barry, for Joey and I. Now, look, we've been watching football for about a month a now. A lot of football. Yeah, and we haven't seen Big Ten or Pac-12 teams play yet, so we're going to rank this based on the teams we've actually seen play football on the field. Joey, kick us off with your number five. And this is a surprise. Now, I knew De'Ara King would add something to Miami, but he's been better than I expected. Has taken care of the football. Their yeah. defense is flying around. And as a team, they're playing with a lot of confidence, yeah. but they have Clemson next. We'll see what they're made of. I'm really impressed with Miami also. And De'Ara King, he, he's shown people he's not just an athlete playing quarterback. He can sit in the pocket and pick people apart, throwing the football as well. Perfect fit for what offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley wants. I've also liked them on defense. UCLA transfer Jalen Phillips at defensive end. Temple transfer Quincy Roche. On the other, they can get after quarterbacks. They're a balanced team. I've got Georgia at number four. I think this is an elite defense, a playoff caliber defense. And we saw them against Auburn get the running game going a little bit. I'll say this. Stetson Bennett, if he keeps playing the way he's playing, he's not going to relinquish the starting quarterback job. I got the Bulldogs right now. Number and I agree with you on Georgia. Did not start the season off great. Last week, they had five points in the first half. Offensively, Jamie Newman opted out. 
JT Daniels, the transfer from USC, mm -hmm wasn't cleared yet because of knee injury so it wasn't sure what they were going to look like yeah. they got it going in the second half of last week's game and then they look terrific against Auburn tonight we got going number three at number three had to find him there Kyle Trask to Kyle Pitts <laughs> it's been terrific so Florida now we've seen them be good on offense and then they'll have a slip up game Right now, offensively, they look like the best offense in the country, and their defense is playing pretty good football. Yeah, I, I think Kyle Trask is the biggest game changer they've had at the quarterback position since Tim Tebow. He's got a lot of weapons to throw to. They're really good on special teams. McPherson might be the best kicker in all of college football. Defense looked improved against South Carolina versus what we saw against Ole Miss. Still maybe some question marks there, but I got them right now. Number three. Number two, roll tide. Mac Jones is driving a Ferrari. He's got tons of playmakers he can throw the football to. They're going to light up scoreboard and score points. They've got four new starters in the secondary. That's still a concern for me on this football team. But right now, Nick Saban and Alabama number two. Yeah, and I don't know that there was going to be any question coming into this season who was going to be uh, between two and one. Uh, we, we just need to see Mac Jones. We know they got all the weapons on offense. And Clemson with ETN in the backfield. Yeah. You're going to have to stop him while also worrying about Trevor Lawrence, Amari Rogers to the outside. Clemson has looked just as good as we expected. Remember yeah. last season yeah. early on, Lawrence throwing interception, everybody's concerned. Yeah. Not this season. No, he's actually thrown 314 passes now without an interception, dating back to last season. So Trevor Lawrence making outstanding decisions. A lot of people wanted to know what this defensive line was going to look like. They've recruited so well at that position, and they're taking games over again. They're dominant on both sides of the ball. So there you go, Barry. Great minds think alike. I know your five picks would have been all over the board. You probably would have put some Arizona group, State yeah, group of fives in there. I'm just, wondering that, why you, five. I'm just wondering why we gave you guys that much time for the exact same picks. Anyway, big games next week. Florida's going to look to continue its hot start at Texas A&M. Texas tries to bounce back against Oklahoma in that Red River rivalry game. you got the big one in the ACC, Miami and Clemson. That's on ABC. And don't forget to give your Capital One fan votes on SportsCenter's Twitter handle on Monday. Down to the wire on Saturday. Fitting because the Preakness was run. UNC Boston College, virtual lock implications for one Jesse Palmer. Second quarter, Phil Jerkovic to David Bailey. Nice the job by the Notre Dame transfer quarterback, seeing he's hot, knowing where his answer is. Late in the second quarter, Sam Howell out of the pocket. Look at the footwork on this kid. 41 yarder to Javante Williams. Yeah, and the best thing he did here was keep his eyes downfield, finds his running back. You can always find a running back getting lost when the quarterback scrambles. Give Howell a lot of credit. Now, keep in mind, North Carolina hadn't played since September 12th. They would review the play for an illegal forward pass. You see there, back foot behind. Call would stand. UNC leads 21-13. Late in the fourth quarter, 24-16. Third and Cole. Jerkovic throws it up to C.J. Lewis, but gets called for pass interference, the defense. Yeah, big mistake here on defense, just too much contact, and it would give Boston College life with a fresh set of downs. So it was third and goal from the 30, now third and 15 from the 22. Jerkovic, the Hunter Long. Hunter Long, nine catches, 96 yards on this game, and they got a chance to make the comeback. Two plays later, quick strike to Lewis. So B.C. has to go for the two-point conversion. Jerkovic scrambles uh, don't do it uh, oh, biggest play the North no. Carolina's defense made Trey Morrison goes pick two big pick two big pick two passing game by the way for UNC has been a little bit erratic through these first two games they get the win though a win is a win is a win and they got a big one coming up against Virginia Tech yeah Mac Brown loves it look again they hadn't played since September 12th perhaps a little rusty they've now won five straight against Boston College NC State and Pitt keep it ACC second play from scrimmage Kenny Pickett against air to Jordan Addison and that's how you draw it up when you run this play in practice that's the way it looks Pickett wide open easiest touchdown hook for all season I mean I hope that's it's, the way it's it harder to complete that, that against the scout up. team yeah in practice you hopefully you're getting a better game and Devin Leary over here to Emeka Amizi 35 yeah, yards Pitt's the best pass rush I've seen on film and they play press man coverage Leary threw for four touchdowns against a good defense NC State up one third and nine Pickett to Taysir Mack 13 yard completion. Let's move the chain. This is under five minutes to go. Now, under two minutes to go. Third and goal for Pitt. Pickett fights his way in for the touchdown. Pitt would miss the two point conversion. They're up 29 24. 
Under a minute left, Leary to Thayer Thomas. This is a pit defense that had given up 30 points through the first three games. Of course they're going to make a stop. Moves the chains, then Leary wow. to Amizi again. Perfect back shoulder throw. It's an NC State team that's had to deal with some injury issues, but scoring 30 points against that defense, that's impressive. And they had their number. They've now won three straight against Pitt. This was a good, good game between Memphis and SMU. Third quarter, Brady White, Taj Washington, back of the end zone, touchdown. The over-under on this game was like 75 points. They had 44 in the first half. All right, so Memphis was down 24-3 at one point. That tied it at 27. Fourth quarter, under two. White hit from behind. Fumbles recovered by Elijah Chen. Yeah, turnover's a big issue for White in this game. Not only that fumble, he also threw two picks. Bottle service for Dallas, 41 seconds left. Shane Bouchelle, third and long. Kyle Granson, 13 yards, first down. Next play, Bouchelle. Can't afford the sack and takes it. Can't take a sack here, but Buschel had a big game besides his play. Threw for 474 yards and three touchdowns, but takes a huge sack. Knocks him out of field goal range. Chris Nagar, the kicker, comes back off. So second and 16, Buschel to Austin Upshaw. Big. And this is big because their best receiver, Reggie Robertson, had 243 yards receiving but got injured. Do we have a college kicker situation? No, sir. Nagar, winner. 43-yarder, SMU 4-0 for the second straight season. How about them ponies? Baylor, West Virginia. Mountaineers looking for their first conference win of the season. Late fourth quarter, again, we were coming down to the wire. Charlie Brewer hits Josh Fleeks over the middle. And Brewer threw for three touchdowns in this game, and it was a back and forth. Not a lot of scoring, but very well played. It was so back and forth, Joey, they went to overtime. That tied it at 14. Brewer fakes the handoff. Ben Sims, 25-yard TD. Yeah, Brewer threw two picks in this game, but he, he was heating up late, and as a result, Dave Aranda, he was being aggressive. He was throwing early on downs and a lot late in this game. Game. I love that. Great play call. Baylor ties it at 21. Very first play of double OT. Brewer deep to the end zone. Look at this pick by Tyke Smith. Yeah, this is a bad read by Brewer. Throws it to the wrong side of the receiver, but look at the interception. Mm. Gets a foot down over the head. Now all of a sudden, West Virginia has a chance to put it away. And give it to Letty Letty Brown. 93 rushing yards, two TDs for Brown. He's been fantastic all year. West Virginia, they go to one and one in Big 12 play. Good for Neil Brown, 27-21, the final there. Harry Trey Lance, is he's going to be one and done for North Dakota State. How did his pro scouting game go? We'll find out next. Plus, Coastal Carolina, perhaps helmet implications in this one for the helmet stickers. It is my dream finally coming true. Did I go to a college with a legitimate football team just eight years later? Ask and answer coming up next on College Football Final. So the story last week was Mississippi State beating LSU. The story on this Saturday was Arkansas comes in having lost 20 consecutive SEC games. Felipe Franks, Hudson Henry, touchdown. Real efficient day for the Florida transfer quarterback. 20-28 with two touchdown passes. Blue Pig up 21-7. Then Dylan Johnson, six yards out. Mississippi State makes it a one-possession game. Trails 21-14 late in the fourth. Mississippi State, fourth and one. Joquavius Marks stopped. Mississippi State only ran the ball for 87 yards in this game. When they needed it big late, they didn't get it. So Arkansas forced a punt to Jaden Wally. Calls a fair catch, but watch this. Nope. Oh, Arkansas off. recovers. KJ Costello after throwing for 623 yards last week. Three picks in this one. Unbelievable story. Arkansas gets an SEC win. The one thing that we trying to get them to do is believe they can win. And obviously, we played a half against Georgia and then a full game here tonight. And uh, it feels pretty good. <laughs> well, coming into this game, you talked about how this team needs to see that toughness on tape before they can believe it. You think they believe it now? I think they believe it. All right, Coach, thank hey, you. Hey, go Hogs. Raise back nation, baby. Wow, tale of two weeks for Mississippi State. They beat LSU a week ago, who was taking on Vanderbilt, looking to avoid their first 0-2 start since 1991. Miles Brennan to Terrace Marshall, 51-yarder. And Brennan looked a lot more comfortable in this game throwing it for 337 yards and four touchdowns. More of the LSU we've become accustomed to. Under a minute left in the third, Brennan hands it off to John Trey Kirkland for the touchdown. Yeah, and the game just seems to be slowing down for Brennan. How about LSU's defense getting Derek Stingley back on that side of the ball, giving up only 266 total. Love the old flea flicker, 41-7. LSU gets back on track. Missouri and Tennessee. Tennessee 
looking to continue the longest winning streak in the SEC. Eric Gray, 20 yard touchdown. Easy to win if you're going to run the ball for 232 yards. Gray had 105 of them. And then final minute of the second quarter. Volunteers look good. The pass to Ty Chandler. Yeah, Jared Garitano, too, a quarterback. He's been making good decisions these first two weeks. If he does that throughout the season, they got a chance to win the East. They face the Bulldogs next. 35 to 12 SEC East. You could argue probably better than the West top to bottom this year. Time now for our 2020 vision. This is the time to take advantage and look at something pretty closely. And from this Saturday, we're going to take a look at Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. You might remember Bison not playing a fall season. What they are playing is a showcase game against Central Arkansas. Showcase meaning Lance gets looked at by the NFL scouts. Third quarter, Bison on offense. Lance designed quarterback run. Two defenders have a chance to bring him down, but he can he can move. Lance is 6'4", 226. And you watch him run away from people, but what he does is he's powerful. He's hard to tackle. North Dakota State, Bison, lead 18-6, now to the third. We saw a lot of the feet early on, but we wanted to see a little bit of his arm Yeah, as well. he makes good decisions. Didn't throw a pick all last season, but he also has a great feel in the pocket. He can feel pressure, step up, and then this type of athleticism for a guy as big as he is is just something you can't coach. So a gain of 33, two plays later, didn't see a lot of the arm early. He gets picked by Nick Nakwasa, returns it into Bison territory. So a mistake out of Lance. What did you see here? His first career interception in 308 career passing attempts. All arm quarterbacks feel like they can make a play with their arm. They can just throw one in there that shouldn't be thrown. Bad decision, wasn't thrown well today, and tried to make a play late. So Lance here feels the blitz, and again, pocket away. And this is why a lot of people think he's a top 10 pick. He can turn negative plays into positives. 25-20 lead. Bison trailing now 28-25, but he finds Hunter Lipke wide open for the touchdown. And that's the arm strength. You can just see, just flips it out there, and it just jumps out of his hand. Not great stats. 149 yards and two TTs, but they get the win. Here's Lance. I miss throws. We missed plays that, that we should have made. Um, but I don't think I'd attribute it to Russ or, or the, the fans or anything like that, you know, offensively, uh, just because I'm, I'm sure I'll get this question. It was, it was about the same. Because uh, at the end of the day, we, we can hear a pin drop when we're on offense. Uh, so I guess you'd have to ask defensive guys if, if the crowd, uh, you know, affected anyone. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it just came to, down to playmaking. Our offensive line did a great job, and, and I just got to make more plays. Again, one game, first game, redshirt sophomore Marshall, Minnesota, first freshman to win the Walter Payton Award, which is the FCS's version of the Heisman. He led the Bison to an undefeated season in FCS title in 2019. Look, he's a really good football player, which is why NFL scouts are intrigued by him. Here's Todd McShay on what he thinks of Lance's draft stock. Trey Lance had an eventful day. He started off one for seven throwing the ball. Wasn't himself early on, but he really, he steadied it as, as the game went on. He completed 50% of his throws. He rushed for over 100 yards. And you can see as you watch the game, extending plays, the explosive element to his game. Listen, you got, you got Trevor Lawrence. He's going to be the number one overall pick coming out of Clemson. There's no question about it. But after that, I think if you, if you watch Trey and you really study his game, I don't think there's a big difference between he and Justin Fields. I think it's going to be really interesting. And I think both quarterbacks after Lawrence are going to be top 10 picks when it's all said and done. Good stuff from McShay there. Let's check in on Air Force and Navy. Commander-in-Chief Trophy Series. Air Force wearing the special Red Dales-inspired uniforms. Love that. Paying tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen. Fourth quarter, Matthew Merla, two-yard touchdown. Air Force in a beat. Down. Two option teams. Air Force ran for 369 yards. Navy only 90. And how about Air Force? They get their ninth straight win. Longest streak in the FBS. First game of the season. They came out looking good. Speaking of looking good, uh, who got a dollar? on Saturday. They got top plays first. That's the best of the best. And then, well, the dollar is the other end of the best of the best. You get fined for doing things like that. Find out who it is coming up on College Football Final. Oklahoma State looking to remain the lone unbeaten team in the Big 12. I'll save you the suspense. They had Kansas and Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard's having fun out here. 20 carries, 145 yards, two touchdowns. We were kind of waiting for Hubbard to show up and do his thing. They finally got him going. L.D. Brown, really, to me, through the first two games, had been their best back. But the Canadian got off. Tons of speed. Their defense continues to dominate, guys. 193 yards they gave up to Kansas. And as you mentioned, Matt, 
the only unbeaten team left in the Big 12. 11 straight wins for Oklahoma State against Kansas. They didn't break a sweat. 47-7 the final in this one. Virginia Tech and Duke. Virtual lock implications for Galloway. Fourth quarter, Virginia Tech leads Khalil Herbert 23 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, and Khalil Herbert was trying to help me out. 20 carries, 208 yards, two touchdowns. What did you need in this? I what needed, was I believe it's 11 and a half. Oh, uh, well, this guy was well, trying. I mean, Virginia Tech has so many transfers on their team. Herbert transferred from Kansas. Kansas could have used him. He went over for 200 yards. They had a quarterback to transfer from Oregon. That's why we didn't make Lock it. Tech. Virginia Tech will win a 38-31. That's a no cover. So both Joey, Jesse, one and one this week, bringing their total as a team, five and three, Galloway three and one, Palmer two and two. We got a new segment this year on College Football Final. It's called That's a Dollar. We fine each other a dollar for saying or doing stupid things. Some would say it's a Barbie world. That's a dollar. That's a dollar. That is a dollar. A Charlotte player attempted to do the worm. That's 10 dimes. You didn't even headbutt you have doing? Anymore. Go sell some lemonade, bring back 50 cents each, and pay your dollar. I don't care. You're the punter. You got one job. Come on, man. That's a dollar. Yeah, that's it's a terrible camera angle. Whoa. Is it game? We're here. We're playing. Did I miss class? Actually, there was a kick, but TV was not ready. This is ill-advised every day of the week. Guys, we got rich off of Ole Miss, Kentucky. Mm. Hey, look, I believe in celebrating on your way to the end zone. Have some fun. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> but you, oh, oh, you oh, cannot be oh, caught oh, on oh. the celebration. <laughs> Giving it the peace oh. sign. And then the point, that was the best part. How about this, two plays later, the same guy, Asim Rose going in, tries to stretch the ball over the goal line, fumbles, Ole Miss recovers, he goes back and sees his offensive coordinator, he's like, that's my bad, man. Eddie Grant's like, that's a dollar. Yeah, yeah we bad. know it's your bad. Now, I normally give a dollar to a kicker for this, but then watch the officials. One says it's uh, good, the other goes, well, it was good enough. Not sure what the back judge saw. That's a dollar, sir, for watching it clank off the <laughs> upright and say that he it was good. Bad form. Boy, did we make some money from finding those players in the Kentucky game. All right, top play time. Number five, Jared Daggy, intercepted by Terrell Bernard. See that again. Oof. That, no way Daggy saw him. It was like wow. he, was, he was hiding behind the line and then jumps up and makes a great play. Jump out of nowhere. Number four, Pitt NC State. Kenny Pickett, Taysir Matt. Over the middle of the field. Taysir Ooh. Matt making the catch in traffic between two defenders and then landing the flip. Didn't get alligator arms or anything. Oh, Went up there, made the catch. It, a nine. it was a dare to be great scenario. Florida State, Jacksonville State. LaDamian Webb up the middle and somehow. Oh, wow. It didn't look like Florida State was going to have many highlights in this game. They were down 21 7, but then they got things going. It's because of the run game and plays like this. Mm. Stay on your feet, young man. Mm. Good for Webb. Yeah, they were down for a bit. They would win 41 24, but with Amy and Webb, it's lower body power. Uh, Kyle Trask intercepted here by Rizriel Mukamu. How many cornerbacks do you know that are six foot four? I don't. Like this guy, Mukuamu. Remember he had that big pick six against Georgia last year? Reaches out with his left arm, his wing. They didn't review it, though. We were surprised by that, so it counted. And then Andrew Booth Jr. playing the day. Yeah, definitely no need to review this one. One-handed ball sticks to his glove. Maybe the best interception you'll see all year. I mean, that was good. The glove was, was extra tackified. A.O. Frank Gore Jr. Southern Miss gets a touchdown, and Daddy loved it. Frank Gore Jr. scored a college touchdown. His dad actually tweeted as well, saying, proud papa. But good for Frank Gore Jr. Congratulations to him and his dad. It is the most coveted portion of the program. Our helmet sticker ceremony is a mere few minutes away. Start your NFL Sunday, Sunday countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern ESPN and the ESPN app. USF Cincinnati. Joey earlier in the show declared Cincinnati a playoff contender. Trey Tucker would agree going 97 yards. Put a lot of confidence down there in Cincinnati. Tell you, Matt, the group of five, keep your eye on them as long as the Big 12 looks the way. This was a sloppy game, by the way. Nine total turnovers in this matchup. Oh, Luke Fickle, 28-7. Time now for the best part of the program. Helmet sticker ceremony time. Joe Fouché, two interceptions as Arkansas 
Arkansas snaps a 20-game SEC losing streak. Hey, goal, Sammy. Hey. Good for you. Good win. Mac Jones, guys. 435 passing yards in their win against Texas A&M. And get this. He's already thrown three TDs in his career over 85 yards, more than any other Alabama quarterback ever. Dude's only started six games. Look, Pretty good. A melancholy helmet sticker for my guy Reggie Robertson, SMU. Five receptions, 243 yards, two touchdowns against Memphis. He left the game injured, non-contact contact injury on the knee, but for when he was on the field, he was the best player on Saturday. Reggie Robertson, helmet sticker. Bailey Zappi, Houston Baptist. He had four touchdowns passing against Texas Tech, five against Louisiana Tech, but he lost. Three touchdown pass against mm. Eastern Kentucky. Finally got momentum. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Matt better. Corral, guys. Ole Miss, 24-29, 320 yards as they beat Kentucky. Also threw four TDs, man. This dude spins the magic bean. Lane Kiffin's offense has been fun to watch. The biggest reason why, though, is Matt Corral. Coastal Carolina, Shanty clears. You get a helmet sticker. Grayson hey. McCall, 322 yards, four touchdowns against Arkansas State. Willie Korn calling ball plays out there. So, Grayson McCall, congratulations on your helmet sticker. We have a bonus helmet sticker. May the I see that best helmet? sticker of the season. The producer of this program. Congratulations to Amy Volsky, her husband, Chris, Yay. on the birth of their son, Chase Robert Volsky, on Wednesday. Baby and mama are healthy. Congratulations. So congratulations. Helmet sticker for the Future young Chase. Future Penn State linebacker. I've got one more bonus helmet sticker. Palmer's birthday is on Monday. So happy birthday hey, to happy Palmer. Birthday. Turning 33. Welcome to Thank you. Thank you. That's college football. Oh, my God. That is a dollar. <laughs>